Hey, AP Sats, hope you guys are having a great day. So, we're moving on to chapter four, section two, day three, uh, or lesson three, I suppose, of um, the practice of statistics. And we're going to talk today about how experiments can go wrong. So, um, and like how to like deal with that. So, today we're going to talk about the placebo effect, um, what blinding is, and uh, what statistically significant means. So hopefully by the end of today, you'll know what those things are, um, if you don't already. So I would imagine most of you have already heard of the placebo effect. Um, and basically the placebo effect is that the mind is so powerful that sometimes um, when people are taking medication that they think is medication, but is actually like a sugar pill or something, um, they actually see and feel the same effects um, at a pretty similar rate as somebody who has actually taken the drug. Um, so basically, they're not taking anything, but their body reacts in a way that um, makes them think that they've got the real drug. Um, this happens a ton, uh, which is why in many experiments, you need to have a placebo um, to kind of control for the pl placebo effect. So um, the placebo is a harmless pill, medicine or procedure, prescribed for more, uh, more for the psychological benefit to the patient rather than any other psychological effect, um, or physio sorry, physiological effect. So there was actually a recent study um, done, an experiment done, uh, they, there was some um, brain surgery that uh, they thought would help with um, Parkinson's disease. And what they found, or what they had to do um, with the experiment, um, is they actually had to have uh, the participants in the study, um, they had, had to let them know ahead of time that like, you may receive the true surgery, you may receive like a fake surgery. Um, and so all of the participants, regardless of whether or not they got the, the actual um, procedure, uh, they went through the whole process. They had their head cut open and like major, major surgery, um, but didn't get the actual treatment. Um, and then the other group did get the treatment. Um, and the reason that they had to do that was because sometimes the mere fact that like they had surgery would make someone recover. Um, and so you have to like test whether or not that's actually the case, or is it because um, the treatment actually worked? Uh, so anyways, there's millions of examples of the placebo effect working. So for example, there was um, a study where 42%, 42% of balding men um, maintained or increased the amount of hair on their heads uh, when they took a placebo. Um, I mean, Parents use the placebo effect all the time when they like kiss your boo boo and it's all better. And then like the kids like, oh my god, it does feel better. Um, they're not making it up a lot of times Maybe when you get a little older. Uh, yeah, but like the younger kids, they actually feel better. Um, there's also like this really interesting study that occurred um, that kind of tested pain relief after being um, have, being shocked uh, in two different groups. Um, in the experiment actually got a placebo pill, but one group was told that the medication cost $2.50 per dose, um, and the other group was told that, that the pain medication, that was actually just a placebo, um, cost 10 cents per dose. Um, so one was a little more expensive than the other, is what they told the group, even though both were just sugar pills. Um, but 61% of the people who got the um, cheap pill, uh, the cheap pill, um, experienced pain relief, but 85% um, of those with the more expensive pill uh, experienced pain relief. So um, even, you know, this fact that like we believe that we pay for the quality that we get um, can have a huge impact on how you re react to something. So it's just fascinating. Like, I would recommend going 
um, and researching some stuff with the placebo effect. Um, there's also something called the nocebo effect, uh, which we don't really study in this class, but basically it's also saying that even with a placebo, you can also get the negative side effects, like, um, you know, the just random side effects that you would get taking the normal pill. Weird stuff, man. The brain is crazy. If you think you know yourself, you have no idea because nobody knows. I mean, there's so much you don't know. It's crazy how powerful the mind is. Okay. That's why you should always be open-minded, right? Totally. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> second, uh, second vocab word for the day, um, is that, uh, is a blind, a single blind study. Um, and this is a study in which the subjects uh, don't know what treatment they're receiving or what group they're in. Typically you want this to happen because if you know that you're getting the real pill or you know you're getting the placebo pill, it totally eliminates that placebo effect. Um, so usually you want at least a single blind experiment. You also have a double-blind experiment, and what that is, um, is both the subjects, so the, the people, the individuals who are in the experiment, don't know what they're getting, whether it's the treatment or the placebo, and also the people administering the treatment, and potentially the people who are analyzing the results of the treatments, uh, don't know who, what group has what. Um, and the reason for that is like, say you're um, a CEO, CEO probably wouldn't be doing experiments, but like you work for a pharmaceutical company and you're trying to like prove that your new pill works to help reduce depression. Um, if you really think that your pill is going to work, you could unintentionally um, like impose your own bias in the results of the survey um, or, or I mean in the study, or you could like Maybe if you knew ahead of time and you were handing out the pills, like maybe you like are like, this is the real pill, you know, and the other group you're like, this is the real pill. Um, or just like the way you act might affect whether or not people believe um, they're in the group, uh, in, in the real group or the placebo group. Um, and also it's the same thing with the, with on the other end, analyzing the results. You don't want um, people with uh, who have um, what's the word I want an agenda. <laughs> I found my word. Um, you don't want people with an agenda analyzing the results if they know um, who's in what group, because you can kind of manipulate the data um, a little bit, even you know not intentionally, but you can manipulate manipulate the data if you know who has what pill. Um, so, so double blinds, uh, double blind experiments are usually quite helpful. Um, uh, not always possible, so it depends on what you're doing, but um, it's typically something that you would want in an experiment. And last but not least, we have um, statistically significant, which is a term that basically means that the observed effect or the effect that you see in an experiment or a study um, is so large or so extreme that it would not occur by chance very often. And so basically what that means is like, say for example, I wanted to do an experiment on whether or not giving coffee to my students before class affected their ability to focus in class. Um, and I wouldn't actually do this, you know, some lawsuits, but um, I would give, you know, half the class coffee and half the class probably decaf. Um, and the thing is, like, other things might affect um, people's focus. Maybe on just by random chance, I happen to get all of the people who already drink coffee and are already really engaged, like I, just those types of people, they just happen to be in the real coffee group, right? Because if I'm doing things randomly, like that could in theory happen. Um, and then I get all the people who don't normally drink coffee and just don't happen to like be that like focused in class in the other group. And I might look at my results and I might say, oh, the coffee helped, but it actually didn't, right? Because I just happened to have the kids who focus anyways in the coffee group. 
um, that would be a result that would happen by random chance. Um, but what we want to do is we want to determine are the results that we have likely to happen by random chance or not. Um, and so later in the year we're going to talk about how to determine that probability. What is the probability that somebody, um, that you would get these results or anything more extreme um, just by random chance. Uh, and so if the observed effect is so significant, significant it's so big, um, it really occurs by chance, we would call that statistically significant. Okay, so we already talked about the placebo effect, how it works. Um, the brain is a powerful thing. Placebo effect is the effect that your body has when you have a, a when you take a placebo, um, and it's important to have placebos so that you reduce the placebo effect. So, um, yeah, that's it. That's this lesson. Short lesson. Um, interesting stuff. You should go take a look. Go research it. It's kind of cool to see all the experiments that they've done um, where people react crazy to placebos. Um, it, they've even had studies where they give people non-alcoholic drinks and tell them they're alcohol alcoholic and they actually react and act as if they were drunk. And not only that, but they forget stuff and can't remember stuff and actually can't function as well. And even the next day might even have a hangover. Um, even if they've had non-alcoholic beverages, but have been told that they're alcoholic. So, crazy stuff, people. Crazy stuff. It's fascinating. Go check it out.